Hey Defenders, welcome back. In this video, I want to show you guys the basic of Wazoo's new active response feature. Um, in the 4.2 release of Wazoo, they really beefed up their active response capabilities and really kind of changed the way how the manager and agent are communicating when an active response event takes place. So in this video, I would just want to show you guys kind of the basics of how this works and kind of how we can play around with some variables and grabbing and extracting fields out of Wazoo's new active response. So previously, it was really limited. And what I mean by that, if you guys uh, have been around with Wazoo for a few years now, uh, the active response feature was cool, but you were really only limited to only extracting the data.source IP value within your Wazoo alert. So if you were looking to do active response, maybe on like mod security alerts, um, if that is your WAF and you're pumping those to Wazoo, you were really limited into the fields you could take advantage of to trigger an active response. Um, so, and it really resulted in a lack of flexibility. You were, you couldn't really get creative with the active response feature. And it just, while it was, you know, useful and neat, it really didn't give any outstanding value. And in the new version here, the, the manager actually sends the JSON of the alert back to the agent. So now what we'll be able to do is extract any of these fields because and and use that later on in our script because the wazoo manager actually sends the json of the alert back to the agent so now we any field can be now stored as a variable and used later on in our script um, and this makes it so so flexible you can really you can really now run active response on any type of alert and get really creative with the active response customization. Uh, if you guys have seen the, the previous videos that I covered on active response, such as the DNS queries with Alien Vault and the software policy, that was taking advantage of Wazoo's new active response feature. And there are some requirements. Uh, again, I said this was a more recent release, so your Wazoo and managers need to be on agent 4.2.0 or later. Uh, I think 4.2.5 just came out, um, if I'm not wrong. So, so if you can, go ahead and upgrade your managers and agents to the latest version. Uh, if you need help doing that, I, I'll link to one of our previous videos in the top right and in the, co uh, in the description below. You will need PowerShell 7 on Windows boxes, and we will need JQ on our Linux boxes. And reason for that is because we will now need to be able to parse out our JSON fields, right? So Wazoo Manager sends the JSON back to the agent, and we need some type of library that can read and parse through our JSON field. So PowerShell 7 for Windows and JQ for Linux distributions. But enough of that, let's go ahead and get into it. And right, so I'm on my Wazoo agent here. Um, I am going to go ahead and create my own active response script. So I'll go, I'll go into var, osec, active response, bin, and I'll just call it active response.sh. Um, I'm just going to do a bash script. You can just as well do a Python script if you want, if you want a little more flexibility within your code. Um, and then I'm just going to have a very simple bash script here, which I'll just, uh, I'll just paste in the comment below if you guys are looking to follow along. And what I'm doing here is we are setting a, a bash. We are then reading our input JSON that is sent back to us. And what I mean by that is our is our JSON that our Wazoo manager sends back to us. And so our Wazoo agent is now going to read the JSON that was just inputted onto it from the manager. And then I'm setting an action variable here. And then here we are stating that we want to JQ to be able to parse through it. And I'm going to read the parameters.alert.data.sourceIP. And that'll be a little more clear uh, here, here in a sec as we go a little further. So that actually needs to be action for this example. Oh. 
and then I'm going to echo out the action which the our action variable will equal the value of whatever is in our parameters that alert dot data dot source IP field and and then I'm going to just write it to this active dot TST dot one so that looks good on the agent end and so if we jump onto our manager which I've covered more in depth with con configuring active response in a previous video so if you're a little confused about where we are now um, make sure you check that out and I'll link to that in the description below as well um, but we'll come down here to our active response commands and here I'm going to set my command block so I'm going to set it as the executable that we created active response.sh and just give it the name of active response I'm going to then create our active response block that is going to call this command here so I'm going to say not disabled and I'm going to trigger it on the rule ID 5710 which should be a failed login or, or user doesn't exist um, and then I'm going to call the command active response which will say hey I want the wazoo agent to run this script and then the location will be local so whoever sent whatever agent sent this alert of a failed login to the wazoo manager uh, that is the agent that will run the active response so that looks good uh, we'll go ahead and uh, you'll need to, to restart system CTL restart and now let's go ahead and see this guy in action so going back to our script here so our manager once we fill our login here will send us back the JSON we're going to parse out the source IP that triggered the alert and we're going to write that to our text file here so let me go ahead and fail some logins so we just failed so if we open up our temp active response active test our active text file we see that our source IP has been stripped has been stripped out so we've now stripped out our source IP associated with the alert but, so to take it a little further let's get the whole JSON response back from the manager so we can actually see what is being received by the agent so instead of echoing out my my action I'm going to echo out the input if I can spell that right the input JSON so this is so this will show us what the manager has sent back to the agent so I'll save that off um, you don't need to restart wazoo or anything you don't need to restart the agent or anything I will fail a login again and now let's see what the contents of our file look like now and so now opening out our active test file here we see the JSON sending back to the agent so here we're seeing our wazoo's manager has sent the command of add so and this comes into play with the timeout so if I have the timeout capability set within my active response block then then when that time has expired the wazoo manager sends the delete command here and then we see the actual json of our alert so we see our timestamp we see everything similar to what we would in kibana right so here we see my rule description so attempt to log in using a non-existent user um, if we find our source ip which where are you at here right we see we see the the value that we strip out and that was the data dot source IP field like what we see here right okay so now from this what could I strip out well we just strip out anything let's say I wanted to grab the uh, let's just say rule dot description so I'll open up my script again and here instead of alert dot data dot source IP I'm gonna change this to rule dot description description yeah <laughs> um, and so here we kind of and let me kind of show you what I'm talking about here so I'll open our active response script out on the right here 
Oh, let me go into bin. Active response. Okay, so if we're looking at the what we're grabbing, and again, this is why we use the GQ library here, we see how we are now parsing, we're kind of stepping down the fields within J, within our JSON response until we get to the field of the data we want to extract. So here I'm going to step down my fields, right? So I first going to step down the parameters field. So our parameters field here, and this is where you'll always start the beginning of whatever you're looking to parse out. You always start with our dot parameters block, and then we're going to go into dot alert, and and then we're going to traverse into dot rule. And then we're going to parse out dot description, which will say uh, login session opened. So let's go ahead and see that in action here. So I'll save that off and let's go ahead and create an alert now. Say login is here. And if we cat out the contents of this guy, it should have been our rule description, but that is why. So we, we're setting that, whatever whatever fields data we want to extract out, we're setting that to our action variable. And you can, of course, if you want to strip out multiple fields, you could, add, you could create more and more variables for them. So it's really kind of the possibilities are endless. And then I'm going to echo, I'm going to echo back out to my test file, the value that it has been assigned our action variable and I need a dollar sign there and let's go ahead and see this in action now um, oh let me fill a login all right so we should now have our rule dot description and sure enough here we go so attempt to log in using a non-existent user right we're getting we're now able to extract out a totally random field because we're now getting all of the data that actually generated the alert back to us, right? So, so again, I could change that up again. Let's say I want to grab the ID of the agent, right? I want to I want to grab the ID of the agent. So again, I will then step down and actually let me kind of fill you guys on a little trick here. So I've copied my JSON and I've put it into this parser here and now it's a little uh, it's a little more user friendly to read, right? So again, we're stepping down parameters. We are stepping down alert and I'll kind of throw these off to the side here. Yeah, so so we've stepped down parameters and let's see where our agent ID would be pulled from. So, and then dot ID. So we should now extract out the value of four. So that'll be good. So that value will now be set to my action variable that that is what we are outputting to our test file here. So if we try a login again, and we go ahead and fail it, we should now get the value of 004. And sure enough, we grab the agent ID. So we're now able to grab anything that exists within the JSON, um, which is you know all the metadata around the alert. So in a future video, I will do kind of the, the virus total I will do the virus total active response feature that we covered previously, which was the old way to do it um, with the, our new and improved uh, active response capability. And we'll get a little more hands on with it there. Um, but I just wanted to show you guys just how easy it is to now extract any value within our active response data that we get back into a variable to be then used later within your program. So I know that may not have been too exciting um, to you guys, but I just wanted to kind of show you guys, hopefully open y'all's mind up to now the possibilities of what can be done with Wazoo's new active response feature and just how flexible it can now be. So uh, look forward to some new active response videos here in the, in the near future. And I appreciate you guys hanging out with me and I will see you in the next one.